Hello again everybody, it's Janelle here and welcome to Inktober. I have a alcohol ink giveaway that kind of extended into October partly because of Inktober and also because I didn't get enough videos uploaded in the middle of September so I had to pack them all in at the end and so I'm kind of extending the giveaway just to give people more of a chance to watch the videos for the giveaway. And on this one I'm going to show you how I painted this. Now I did do this in a video um, I will link to it right there. It is actually part of the giveaway series videos that you have to watch for the alcohol ink ones. So what you need to do to enter my giveaways is you need to watch every video in that giveaway playlist. Um, so each giveaway has its own playlist and all those videos in the playlist have to be watched to enter that giveaway. They also, each video needs to have a, you need to comment on each video and you need to give a thumbs up or thumbs down to each giveaway, uh, to each video, wow. And um, you need to be subscribed to me. So, um, let's do this and I want to kind of change it up. This is a really kind of bright pinky red. I want to do it, try to do it more vintage -y. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to do it. And I'm doing this on tile. So actually the first thing we're going to do before I forget, so I'm just going to spray this, make sure it's all nice and clean. And I am just spraying it with 70% rubbing alcohol. Um, for all my blending solution and everything like that, I do use 90% rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol, uh, which is the same thing, um, or higher. But for cleaning, you can just, you know, 70% will be fine. And you just kind of want to wipe that surface and it just helps to get in any of the oils off and whatever. So all I want to do is I am just going to kind of start by painting the shadows of the rose. And so I'm going to choose a darker color. I'm not even sure what some of these colors are. Um, so let's just so watch them out a little bit here. So I'm just going to use my... Um, Paper. That's a nice pale color. So I've got a variety of markers here from Artist Loft, Hobby Color. Uh, this one <clears throat> is Walmart brand Bria Reese. I don't know if it's a Walmart brand, but it's Bria Reese and you can find it at Walmart. And I do have a, oh, I like that one, a video um, comparing a whole bunch of different alcohol markers. So definitely check that out. I will link to it right there. I have a Copic here. Nope, this is not a Copic. This is a Touch New, which is useless. This this one is useless. Um, I do have some Copics. So I've got a good thing here. So I'm just going to take my lightest, or my darkest color, sorry. And I'm going to do what I did last time. And basically what you want to do is you want to just pick out the darker shadows and think of them, it might help to think of them like just odd shaped triangles kind of forming in with one another and some of the triangles actually look like triangles, some of them look like really flattened triangles like this one that I'm doing right now um, and you want them to kind of have a little bit of a scalloped edge you don't want them to be perfectly straight and round, right? And and you want to keep most of your dark shadows to the center, um, especially your bigger ones, because as you in the center of the rose is the darkest, right? And then as we go out, there's just a few shadows. Um, I do have a few watercolor uh, roses I've done. So if you want, you can kind of check those out. Um, they're in a watercolor playlist. And the points of the triangle go outwards. They don't really come inwards. So think of this as a triangle, but you've flattened it. 
Think of this as a triangle. So just think of all of these as a triangle. I don't know if that's going to help you or not, but that's what I'm saying. And then I'm just going to kind of do an outline of a rose. And I'm just kind of... Um, doing a little curly line. Have all your lines connecting. And I feel like we need to do another line right here. And you can always delete something um, delete. <laughs> um, you can tell I edit videos lots. You can always kind of get rid of a line. I'm just going to show you how. Um, I always use my blending brush. Um, definitely check out my video for that. And my blending solution here, it's the same thing. But I do have a video that um, shows you how I make my own blending solution. So see how easy that was to do? If I don't like some of this stuff, which I don't, um, I can kind of delete, as it were, my mistake. Now, that alcohol on there can cause you heartache if you aren't expecting it. So you can use that to your advantage, but just be aware of what's going on. I'm just kind of assessing my outside shape here. And I'm finding that I need to change some things. And then I just think this could use just a good shape around there. Let's do one more big one. And there. I'm getting bigger and bigger, but this is a big tile. There. Okay, I think that'll work. I might have to add some darker shapes in here. The bigger the flower, the the more we'll, we should do a few shapes. Um, and all you have to do to to put some more shadows in here is just pick out a few and just make them a little bit thicker. That's all I'm doing. I'm just picking out a few little lines. And you notice that I made that with the point inward, and it didn't look right. At least it didn't look right to me. So. Um, what I can do is make this, we can do a little bit of a curl. So this is curling around. We'll see how that turns out. Who knows? Okay. Anyways, there's that. Now I want to add a little bit of a lighter color. And I've got quite a few light colors here. This light peach very light and this will start kind of blending with squeaky squeaky with um, what I already have if I wanted it to um, it might also erase some of it so just be careful with that this is a uh, light peach by artist loft um, which is the Michaels brand and uh, this one is uh, when I did my marker review. It's not as good as Copics, but it's definitely passable. And it's definitely better than some out there. Like for instance, I found, found a couple on um, Amazon, a brand on Amazon that I thought I'd try. It was pretty cheap, but I thought, well, people might like to just try out alcohol markers by getting a cheaper brand from uh, Amazon. So the one I got was Touch New. And it has some really good colors, um, but I was disappointed with some of the color selection, even though I got like quite a big set. I think I got the 48, maybe the 60 set. Um, my lightest one here is completely dried out. Um, eh, they're not the greatest. If you're choosing between those and Artist Loft, or even the Walmart Bria Reese that you can get, uh, don't get these. These will work for coloring, giving to your kids, or whatever. Um, I'm going to use them because I have them. 
Hobby Color, if you ever find this, uh, it's a really good brand. I really like it. Not as good as Copics. It doesn't have a brush tip. I'm not going to do a mark review here. So just check out that video. Um, I don't want to get sidetracked here. Okay, I want to put a little bit, I'm just tempted to do a little bit of maybe some yellow um, in the tips. You know how the some roses have this little tip? I don't know if that's going to work. I'll just have to use the I'll call ink. I can use this. Just bring out this pink little tip here. Um, just that very edge is just kind of colored a little bit. And as you draw this, like you don't need to put too much thought into it. You just kind of need to stop every once in a while and just check out, you know, your actual drawing of the rose because you're just doing a whole bunch of scattered uh, lines, curly lines and crinkly lines and whatever. Um, they're just kind of kind of rolling around each other. Hope that makes sense. Probably doesn't. Always make sure that you get that clicked on. They're really good. Okay, so now I'm going to try to work this and make this look a little bit more inky. First, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to... This could be a cool background, possibly. These light colors are washing out. Dark ones. Not so much. I could just use this for a background on something, but those ones aren't really doing too much. The Sharpies and the Bix don't wash away too much. Um, I've done lots of things with them, so if you know how they act, you'll be fine. And here we can start getting that crinkly, kind of crispy edge of color, where it's just this thin, the very edge of the petal has like this dark color on it, which I love about roses. So always go, I want to go from the inside out. I want that line. I don't want to come from here and work on this line. I want to come from here because that will push the color that way towards the edge of the petal. Um, and if I come at it from this way, it's going to push it. It's, it's not. Does that make sense? It's going to push it inwards and I don't want that. So already we're getting a really inky look. Now, um, lots of videos on YouTube show how to do, uh, and I have some too, how to do like abstract flowers with alcohol inks and dropping with a dropper. Um, but this is a little bit more of a controlled look. And I just, I just really like this look for the roses. So as that alcohol dries out, it's going to um, kind of give that petally look and it's going to start looking more inky. And you can wash out some of those lines as they dry, um, if you want to get rid of some of them. Because not only will the color be pushed out to the outside, but there's a lighter line that kind of pushes to the inside, just because that's how alcohol ink works. It just pushes the pigment away. Um, so you can go back in just lightly with just a, like I'm not squeezing this brush at all. And, oh, I missed this one. It does help to have this Lazy Susan. It's not necessary, obviously, but it does help. And I just got it at Bed Bath & Beyond. You can find them at Walmart. You know, a lot of stores have them or look online. They're pretty easy to find. Um, so you can just dip, get rid of those lines. And um, it's easiest with a water brush. You can do this with a regular brush and just dip it into alcohol ink. But this is just... A little more handy, I think. Okay. So I'm going to leave that. I might want to come in and just um, 
define some of these in inner edges. But let's see what we can do with some um, leaves. So this is that touch new business, which I do not love, but I'm going to use it. They do have some good colors. And I mean, it works in a pinch. I just wouldn't, don't spend your money on it unless you're doing a demo video like me. Or, you know, you can try it and maybe your kids are asking for alcohol markers and you just, you, you know, because alcohol markers kind of have a reputation of being pretty expensive. But they really don't have to be. And you could try these and they'd be great for coloring pages. Um, I'm just going to lay some, basically I'm just laying ink down with this, with this, uh, with these markers. And this doesn't have a brush tip. Um, I do prefer a brush tip, but um, if I really like a marker, it's not going to, oh, I really like the bubbles in there. It's really, it's not going to deter me like the hobby color. I really like these markers, but they don't have a brush tip. The Copics and the Artist Loft have a brush tip, and it's really great. Okay. So let's just see about having some fun here. Um, I need to grab my straw. So I want the leaves to be quite loose. I do really like a loose painting, loose flower painting. I love those. That must be the interaction of the um, markers, because none of that did that here. So the markers that I, when I started layering them on top of each other, they did that, which is awesome. I love those unexpected things. Oh, sweet mother, that looks awesome. And I'm just going to do it on this side. So I just kind of want the leaf to be blowing that way. And the more you do this, the more you will figure out what works. Please be patient with yourself. And just take the time to learn how it works because... There's different things, different effects you can do at different times, depending on when you blow, um, how dry your ink is, and what direction you blow. There's lots of different things to consider. Um, it sounds complicated, but it's really not. And I say that in every single video, so please try it. So I've got my leaves looking a little bit more blown out, um, which I like. They're looking a little bit looser. You know what, let's do that right here. Now, if I want to keep this from going in, um, I would just make sure to keep blowing it that way and keep doing it until it's dry. And if I want to do, like, keep it in place, I blow more on top just with my mouth, just lightly. Not so that I blow the ink out, but just so that it, just enough to, like, keep it settled in there. Because it's alcohol, it is going to dry fast. So um, that's a good thing and a bad thing. So you just got to know how to use it. Now, I want to loosen up some of this flower. So I am just going to pick some edges here. Whoops. And because I used a very, very light colors, it's probably going to blow out to nothing. But, you know, there'll be some that shows that stays in there, which I love. So I'm not putting a lot of ink down, just a little bit just to give it a cool effect. Because I do want to make sure it doesn't get away from me. And the more alcohol, or I say ink, but blending solution that you do, the more it's going to get away from you. I'm going to add a little bit of this gold metallic in here just because I want to glam it up a little bit, so why not? And the gold definitely does work, the mixatives definitely do work differently, they do react differently. 
but they're very cool. Just want to bring that out a little bit. Um, you can check out my video on how to seal alcohol inks and, and different projects there. Um, because I can imagine that that's what you're thinking of right now. Because right now I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to have to make sure I seal this before I touch it too much. I just don't want that circle in there. I don't like it too much. So you can always go in and kind of change a few things like this I don't like, so I'm going to blow that out. And I think I'm going to add some greenery down here. And, or maybe just, let's try this brown. Let's see what happens with this. Oh. Let's try this. You don't even need to do a leaf shape, honestly. You can just lay some color down. This is quite light, so we'll have to see how this works. So I mentioned before, I use this when I want like a fatter, rounder more look, and I use this when I want to either control it more or just a skinnier more concentrated look. <clears throat> okay, look at that brown react with the pink. That's the vintagey look I want. Right there. It's blending with that pink, except it's kind of coming back. It always comes back, so be watching for that. I just wanted to break up that perfect circle that was forming there. Oh, oh, I love that brown. We are going to add it in more. And when you're doing this, um, you can't really go on top of wet alcohol with it. It doesn't really work too well. So just keep that in mind. Um, I'm going to try this straw and see if it works. Good. Oh, oh, it's just a very subtle, subtle look, subtle color, and I'm loving it. Make sure you always clean off your markers before you put them away for the day or whatever you're doing. I really like all that texture there surrounding the surrounding rose. Okay, so now I just want to kind of concentrate on the rose itself again. So I just want to bring back some of this, these shadows, because they kind of get a little bit messed up. And um, some of them are still there, but especially the center, you just kind of, that's what will help us to really see it as a rose. The rest of this just looks like really delicate flowers. And I don't really need to do too much there. And then I can just lightly, lightly just kind of, this, this one is a little too perfect for my liking. Mess it up a little bit, there we go. And you do got to watch it because the alcohol will spread and then it's like you have to go in again with some new stuff. So this mixative, um, just be careful until you seal it because it kind of can get a little bit chunky. Um, but it's, it's all good. Um, I think I might go in with just a little bit darker color. Um, what's this French vermilion? Oh, touch new. 
I gotta find my Copics. I think I um, put them to the side. I really don't like this brown of markers, but it's working fine, so I shouldn't complain that much. And they are very cheap, but if you're deciding between those, these, and some other ones, probably the other ones. Let's just go ahead and say that. Um, I think that looks good. I really like this marble look. The gold in there really adds to it. And this would be cool with gold in there, but it looks, I'm just going to leave it the way it is. Um, I want to just bring out just a few shadows. This rose, we need to pop it out a little bit more, I feel like. It just needs to pop out. So I think kind of just going in behind it. I'm not going to blow this out, so I'm just going to do it really sporadically. Yeah, that helps to pop it out a little bit more. And then I think I'm just going to go in behind this one to make this petal pop. Petal pop. Petal pop. Sorry. Nope, that doesn't work there. Um, there. I think we're just going to leave it like that. There. We're done. Sign your name. Ooh, I might. Uh huh. All done.